Hey, nerd, we're back kicking off our rookie breakdowns of the rookie wide receivers. We have a lot to talk about here. We have some really good studs in here. Yeah, we get heated over some Tez. He is not my favorite player, regardless of what you guys say. <laughs> Garrett's thinking about proposing to Tez Walker. Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? He's Jared Wackerly. What's that? I lost all my sound. My headphones. Who needs sound, man? Is that your sound that I'm turning down? Because <laughs> I'm trying to turn down my headphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you turned me down. Oh, like, yeah. I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? I forgot. I'm coming out the front of the thing, and you're, yeah. You start I, doing that was me podcast and sign language. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on around here? Well, I was like, my volume's not changing. So kept... we're back after uh, with our rookie breakdowns after a week off. I was in Vermont. Um, I got sick all the way up until Vermont, then I got healthy in Vermont, then I hurt my knee in Vermont. <laughs> And then I came back from Vermont, and now I'm sick again. So it's been a, it's been a, the number of injuries and illnesses you've had over the past like two months. I'll tell you what, in Vermont though, like I literally thought I tore every ligament in my knee. He called me. He called me the next day in a um, we'll call him a stupor of sorts. Yeah, I, I was drinking. <laughs> he he was self medicating. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, dude, I almost destroyed my knees. <laughs> it happened like I bent like right. Oh There's a gosh. weird part. Like I was four thousand feet up in the mountain and my kid went to go down this mogul where he wasn't supposed to go, but I wasn't going to let him go by himself. And I saw him fall. So I went to go stop. But I stopped on top of this mogul and there's another mogul on top of it. So like I went down it, but like it was shaped like a V. So my board went one way, my body went another way, but in like, but I came back up. So I turned and my knee was right in front of my face and it was side, like Ugh. sideways. Like I, I later like for 20 minutes, up? my son's like, dad, are you okay? I'm like, dude, it's, I'm not okay. Like, it's bad. Like, really bad. <laughs> Dad, are you okay? Son, I am not no. okay. <laughs> I, I for sure thought, I, I mean, I never seen my leg knee bent sideways that much. Like, I thought I 100% tore every ligament in my knee. What I was afraid to stand up. And then I, was, then I got up, I was like, hey, I think I might be able to get down the mountain. I got down the mountain, and then I had to have, uh, from there, I had to have ski patrol take me on a uh, snowmobile back to the main place. And it was... <laughs> I iced it and See took you, ibuprofen for 30 hours straight. <laughs> but after that, I put a uh, sleeve that I have on my knee now. I wrapped it up in ace bandage, and I went snowboarding the next two days. Look there you go. You. Playing so through the pain. Good. Yeah. And it's, it's fine. It's Blue fine game. going straight out. I just Any any movement any, sideways. Any rotational oh. or side to side. Oh, no Does it make no. you appreciate some of these guys with the ACL surgeries and stuff now a little more? Garrett. No, it makes me appreciate how my flexibility at 44 years old. <laughs> hey, oh. yeah, Garrett's going to like you a little more. <laughs> yeah, he's like, how much draft that yeah, guy? I, I almost had you on my team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> Missed he it almost. by that much. One more knee injury. Uh, you're on. I would have got Dad, you. are you okay? <laughs> no, it's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> like, it's Garrett Price's team. Bad. I was afraid to move. Yeah. Like, it looked that bad, like the way my knee bent. It was unbelievable. What? I was, I'm so glad because it was like I paid for the whole week to go snowboarding. And up there, it's expensive. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. And I got out there. I'm like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like, uh, like being above the clouds, you know, <laughs> like seeing all the other peaks of the, all the other mountains. It's like this is, this is what I've been dreaming of. The snowboard. Cause I've never gone that high up, and it was unbelievable. And then fourth run in, it's like, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> and I was sick. Was that on that. Monday? No, uh, yeah, it was on Monday. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the next day was the day you called Matt. Yeah, the next day, that's when I got that nice little audio message from you. <laughs> so I, I, oh, for me? You're like, I don't even remember sending that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I know I was drinking. Yeah, that's hilarious. Self-medicating. Knee felt, knee felt great. I'm sure it did. Wife was like, do I go to Lodge while the boys snowboard? And I was like, I guess I'll have some drinks. Probably help. You yeah, know? sure. Yeah. Show did. Always <laughs> does. So... We're back talking rookie wide receivers. We all know that this 24 class has been touted as one of the deepest, best wide receiver classes that we have seen possibly ever. Uh, definitely, will, it's going to be real fun to send a ball draft to see these guys go in the first three rounds. A lot yeah. of teams need wide receivers. We know the Bills need a wide receiver real bad right now. Oh. Uh, so, um, yeah, and I would say this. I mean, these top three guys, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Romo Dunze, all have the potential to be a true elite number one receiver. Like we're yeah. talking Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, like that kind of receiver. They have that kind of potential. To me, this is the best like top end receivers I've seen since Julio Jones and AJ Green, like in a class. Like, yeah. Because those guys were like 
highly touted, and they panned out. I, I tweeted out almost the exact same thing a couple weeks ago. So I, I'm 100% with you. I think these guys are, are truly top tier. Yeah, and I and I have my opinions that different than Twitter. Uh, definitely at the top of the group. Like, I definitely at the top three. Like, my opinion is different. Love all three. So I want to I want to start that off for sure. Like, these guys mm-hmm. are elite. I just said could be the number one dynasty wide receiver. I'll just say, like, I feel like for me personally, Marvin Harrison Jr. is in a tier by himself. Like, he's a 1-1 clearly. And I feel like Romo Dunze and Malik Neighbors are closer together than they are to Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll just say that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I haven't done the deep dive on, on Rome yet, so I can't really speak to him. But Oh, you're going to like him. Yeah, I mean, from everything I've heard, I, I probably will like him. But Marvin Harrison, it, it, to me, is still up there. He started up off up there by himself, and he still is up there by himself. Yeah, so let's dive into him, huh? Yep. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, they have the pre-NFL Draft 2024 Best Ball is live on Underdog. Draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the Dynasty Nerds film room. Play in $3 contests all the way up to $1,000 contests. Draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup. You need to get in on this action ASAP. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code NERDS. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 for new members only. And yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERD. So you get all our tools, all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 Gambler. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1 800 Next Step. In New York, call 1 877 Hope New York. In Tennessee, 1 800 889 9789. Let's do it. All right, so Marvin Harrison Jr., um, wide receiver, Ohio State, six foot three and a quarter, two hundred and nine pounds, nine and a half inch hands, thirty three and seven eighths inch arms, seventy seven and a quarter inch wingspan. He is twenty one years old. He didn't run any of anything from the combine. He didn't participate in, in the pro day either. So we got no numbers on him. But in twelve games last year, he had sixty seven receptions, twelve hundred and eleven yards, fourteen touchdowns, a couple of rushing attempts for twenty two yards and or twenty six yards and another touchdown. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. We all know the name, right? This is somebody we've been talking about now for a couple of years. His dad's a Hall of Famer, uh, the Bol- the Bolitnikoff winner this year, who did it with a kind of he had a bad ankle for a lot of the year as well. Correct this year, but this is somebody when you talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. and you're like, why? Where is all the hype coming from? Well, first of all, this is to start off at, with his natural, just God given gift is his size and ability, his DNA. Six foot three and a quarter, 209. The guy's a big wide receiver, but he plays the position like he's a skinny, small guy, right? Like he's really fast. He's really fluid in his r- routes. He's a top tier route runner. His ball skills are second to none. His IQ, his football IQ, is grade A. So this guy, this guy physically and mentally has all the tools that you want as a receiver. He gets in and out of his breaks really well for his size. And that's a big thing for here. Like when you think of like, okay, yeah, he's a really good route runner, but you have to remember this guy is six foot three, two ten. And the way he moves is like he's six foot two hundred pounds. And, that, and, that, and that's a difference maker. Totally agree. Yep. One on one, if you're playing man coverage versus Marvin Harrison Jr. In my opinion, he's unstoppable. He is unstoppable uh, man coverage. He's he's like a C.D. Lamb, right? Like C.D. Lamb and man coverage is pretty damn hard to stop. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, these guys that are elite, they're pretty hard to stop. Yeah, you know, the thing about him is he's got so many different tools and ways to win. Yeah. It's not like he's relying on one certain skill set. He, he can go over top of you and, and pluck a ball off the top of your head. He can win and separate with his routes and, and you know – there's there's nothing that he does that is that's a negative. I mean, you get the ball in his hands, and he's not going to make a guy miss in the open field. That, 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 that's the one thing I can say. It's only negative. Is yards like after catch. Is like yeah, his yak isn't the, that great. Is is the knock on the guy? Besides that, from from my perspective, he does. I mean, hands excellent, route running excellent, excellent, and he. It's not even just that he's got the movement skills necessary. He actually 
you can see him run the routes. You can see him do double moves. You can see him do all the stuff you want to be able to do at the next level. And he's smart enough to be able to sit down in zones, do all that kind of stuff as well. So it's, it is hard to find Knox. I, I, I laid out the one bad thing I can find about the guy and it's his, and it's not even like he's bad at it. He can still, I mean, he can catch a ball and run and get what's there. Make a guy miss here and there. I mean, there's some, there's some wide receivers catch a ball, just kind of fall over, just waiting to get hit. He's not going to do that kind of stuff. He's big enough and, and fast enough and fast enough and all that kind of stuff that he, he's going to get you what's there, but he's not going to make two guys miss and break a big 80 yard run. That's, that's sure. not the kind of wide receiver he is. That's like neighbors. Right. Exactly. That's where kind of those two guys, their biggest differentiator is there. And maybe maybe some suddenness and explosiveness in his move in, yeah. in movements. Um isn't it doesn't look the same uh, out of out of those two players. But uh Marvin Harrison, I, I really can't find anything besides that. I mean fifty fifty balls, he, he can he can he's gonna go out and do all that kind of stuff. Any anything, man. Wins on the boundary, yep. wins in the middle of the field, his body control is amazing. Getting off the line is arguably the best in the class. Like he has multiple different releases off the line. Um, he, he, this is a guy who can stop on a dime as well. Uh, oh, yeah. it, it's, he tracks the ball well. He's, there's not a play that he can't make. Like He will consistently be a high-end receiver in a class full of upside at quarterback and super flex with Jaden Daniels. And we talked about like how I'd be willing, like almost like, if I had multiple first, take J- try and take a swing at Jaden Daniels. Now with all the weapons he has around him, like I'm taking Jan- J- Caleb Williams in both those leagues where I have one one. I'm not going that route because mm-hmm. of just what he has around him now. But I would be totally okay. Like if you have a re- like for example, like in our UDPL league, mm-hmm. I have Anthony Richardson and Pat Mahomes. I don't have any receivers. I have the number two pick. I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. because the only reason I would take a quarterback is a trade for a high end receiver. That's where Marvin Harrison Jr. comes in effect. Totally. We're in a lead together where Garrett offered me one two for B. John Robinson. And Did you do it? I haven't done it yet. But I'm considering it. Yeah. He said, Oh, you could take Jane Daniels. I wouldn't take Jane Daniels because in that league as well, I need a receiver. Yeah. I have Deshaun Watson, but I also have the one one in that league and one eight. So, you're so get like Caleb Williams. I would take Caleb Williams and then I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. I would have no running backs, but my team is not ready to compete anyways, and we right. all know how that goes. So I am considering that deal. We'll see how it hey, goes. Shit. It's just so hard to give up Bijan. It, it is. Know? It's tough. So Marvin Harrison kind of fits that mold for me. We're like, okay, kind of like Bijan last year. Like, I'm okay taking him. I wouldn't take him over Caleb Williams. I wouldn't do that. But I would take him over any other quarterback, and I'd be totally fine with it because he's the kind of difference maker that you make those moves for. Yeah. And a guy like, you know, Jane Daniels, like, yeah, he has upside. To me, Marvin Harrison Jr. is about as sure thing as they come. Yeah. And nothing's a for sure thing. Because I thought Sammy Watkins was a for sure thing. I thought um I thought Clyde Edwards Alaire was for sure. sure. And anything can happen, you yeah. know, once they get to the NFL. You you honestly never know what kind of I mean, Sammy Watkins was Injuries. most likely injury related yeah. to, to with his foot. So you, you know, there's no way to project that kind of stuff. The one thing other the one other thing I will say, you mentioned his speed a couple of times, and I think he's got enough speed. I don't he's not a burner by any chance, you know, like by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think if, if he was to time in a 40, he would be a 4-3 guy. I think he'd be a 4-4 four, four guy, I though. think he'd be a 4-4 four, four guy. I'm, uh, there's plenty of guys out there running 4-3s. That's still super fast. I know, but there's there's fast, and then there's super fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't think he's super fast, so maybe that's another one of his knocks. He doesn't need it. Because, no. I, like I said, he's got plenty of other ways to win and, and you know get the ball in his hands um, at the next level, at really any level. So, um just wanted to at least mention that just so just so it's out there. Yeah. So for for me, I did I tweeted this out a little while ago as well. I I think neighbors is fantastic. I do. But Marvin Harrison is in his own tier. And then we can start to have the conversation for me. And watching neighbors tape, we'll get to him next show. Fantastic player. So that's not at all a knock on him. It's just how highly I view Marvin Harrison Jr. He truly is an elite, elite playmaker. Uh, when when I go back through all my old wide receiver scores, the highest one I had ever given uh, up until this point was an 80.83 for Devontae Smith. Right underneath him with, was Jamar Chase. Right underneath him uh, was Garrett Wilson. And CeeDee Lamb was right after him. So four guys that I think we all think pretty highly of currently in, in the NFL right now were the four highest scores. Uh, he he tops all of those guys 
he comes in at an 82.33. So even with all of the other receivers that I've graded, he's in his own tier, uh, which is which is tough to do when you look at how good some of those guys are. Uh, he has, you know, you mentioned his release, Rich. He's got the best release so far out of everyone I've graded. I've still got more receivers to do. He has the best release. Uh, he's got the best contested catch so far. He has the only 10 that I've given in a category so far, and he has a 10 for body control. That guy is always under control. He can contort his body in ways that other guys can't do. I remember the catch against, I want to say it was Illinois in 2022, where it was a ball on the sideline, and he was able to raise his other leg up high enough to get his one in before he tapped it. Like, he, it's wild. Like, the things that that guy can do as a wide receiver – are just wild. You add in the pedigree, um, everything that we've heard about his discipline as far as just Work being ethic, yeah. an amazing worker in mm-hmm. the off season. Like there's just no there's no red flags. There's there's really no yellow flags even. Like it, it reminds me I read in this would have been whatever it was, 2007, 2008. I'm reading the old school draft guide in high school and I'm I'm going flipping through all the pages and I get to Calvin Johnson. And it lists out all of his strengths and it gets to weaknesses. And this this draft guy put out none present. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about Marvin Harrison Jr. Calvin Johnson, the greatest prospect, wide receiver prospect of all time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, and Marvin Harrison Jr. could probably be argued possibly second. Because I mean Calvin was a burner too. That's a big thing with he him. Could, he, he was could a fly as well. Burner, but like all the attributes that Calvin had, like his body control, his sleeping ability, like Marvin has those as well. It's just mm-hmm. Mark, Calvin Johnson was just... He was bigger and faster. faster. Yeah, <laughs> bigger he was bigger and, and faster. faster. He was so a freak. This is something that's going to come out and most likely be the opportunity to be a wide receiver one year one and be a wide receiver one for the next 10 years. Like yep. this is... This is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that we all chase in Dynasty Fantasy Football. For it's sure. The young wide receiver who... Turns 22 in August. The young wide receiver that could be a wide receiver one for over six, seven years. Yeah. This is him. This is what we always chase. Sometimes you could fall into it, but you fall into it with, like, Justin Jefferson, you fall into that. That wasn't, he wasn't graded out that way. And Jamar Chase, like, people talked about him, but, like, Jamar, Jamar Chase is yet to finish as a top three fantasy football wide receiver. So... Is he a wide receiver one? Yeah, he's dynasty gold for sure. But like he's not, he's not even on CD, in my opinion, Jamar Chase hasn't reached CeeDee Lamb level yet, who finishes wide receiver one overall. That's what Marvin Harrison Jr. offers. He's probably gonna go into a situation where he immediately slides into the number one role, whether it be with the Arizona Cardinals, the the LA Chargers, the New York Giants, wherever that may be, wherever he goes, even if it's four quarterbacks first, he'll be the guy immediately. And he will win in the NFL immediately. Like, there's nothing he needs to learn. The kid grew up around the game. He's been around the game his entire life. His dad's a Hall of Fame receiver. He's got a younger brother who's checking out Ohio State as well, so I can't wait to see him coming to the game. So, for me, this is as good as it gets. It's as good as I've seen since I've started doing this podcast in 10 years. It's as good as it gets. And whatever you're willing to pay, the trade for Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, you should be willing to pay for Marvin Harrison Jr. If there's a window for you to trade up to get this guy in your draft, I would recommend it. Because there is. B. John Robinson. You won't regret it. <laughs> yeah, and it's probably why I will probably end up doing that deal, yeah. which is which is crazy because... And you'll give him up. Huh? You'll give him up. Give up. For give Bijan. up one or two. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he I, withdraws it real quick. I know, like, <laughs> remember, just, just kidding, just well, kidding. It's That's tough for me I because, like, accept it right now, my only problem is, like, okay, I know I don't have any other running backs out there, but I'm also, like, I have to come to the realization, like, I'm not ready to compete. Now, the big thing, though, is, like, Bijan and Marvin are going to be, like, Bijan's only 22, and he's a top-end running back who's about to go enter a whole new system. So, like, but he's a running back. It's harder to come by, you know what I mean? Right. But he is a running back, and my team desperately needs receivers in that league as yeah. well. So, what, what do you I think, got, Jared? I got nothing else to add. I mean... Everyone's heard a breakdown on Marvin Harrison at this point. I will just say he is my wide receiver one in his own tier. Uh, it's not a 1A, 1B with with neighbors or a Dunze uh, for me either. Um, I, I have a question for you three, though, and Rich already answered this, but Matt or Garrett, like, given the uncertainty, I mean, even though Caleb Williams has talked about this elite blue chip 
prospect. Um, given the uncertainty of like quarterbacks hitting, like there's always a chance that he's not going to become what we all want him to become. And Marvin Harrison is this can't miss wide receiver. That's, you know, mm-hmm. what Rich just said could be wide receiver one on your dynasty team for the next 10 years. Would you guys consider taking him first overall over Caleb in super flex leagues? I, I couldn't personally. And it's, it's even close between him and Daniels at two uh, for me. So yeah. it's I, close for me. Too. Yeah. I don't think if I, I need c- a quarterback. I'm taking Daniels. I don't think I could just because of the positional value. Yeah. That's the only reason. I mean, from a, if I'm just looking at prospects, I, I you know he great tire. Yeah, he great tire. Myron Harrison's cleaner. Yep, I'm 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 with you guys there. And, and Caleb's just going. Caleb's going to too good of a situation, like as well. Like you're talking about a number one over. You're talking about somebody who considers a generational prospect, but also going to the greatest number one overall landing spot probably of all time. You know what I mean? Like they had the number nine overall pick. They just added Keen Allen. They got tons of capital. You know, they yeah. have tons of money. And so, a running back in free agency. Yeah, and, it, it, it's everything around him is set up for success. Like if he as long fails, as like it'd be like you can throw Baker Mayfield in that offense, and he'd probably do pretty damn well. So <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that team is set up for success already. And if he's if he turns out to me, that's just gonna you know es- you know escalate how soon he produces on the field. So I think you're gonna get immediate returns on a guy like Caleb Williams. Definitely they go like Roman Dunes at nine. What I, well, all I got, all I want to know is wh- why you got to hate him, Baker, like that, man. Yeah, it, was, like, it made it sound like he was pretty bad. <laughs> no, he's not. It's, it's Zach not, Wilson I mean, could it, succeed in an offense like this. There you go, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But I mean, I'm just talking about like it would ex- it would put Baker at a high, much higher level. No, I mean, like I knew what you meant. It, it's, right. it's it just made it sound like you didn't like Baker, which we knew was not true. And, and listen, at, even at one two, what I'm gonna take Marvin Harrison at one that one league. Like I know how I play, and I always say, hey, you got to take these. Uh, re- quarterbacks no matter what but i mean <laughs> unless you find outliers he's an outlier what was me. this were you grabbing at something rich i thought there was uh <laughs> you were pointing to something <laughs> rich is- I, I saw a floaty like uh a too floaty. much nasal spray for rich yeah, man. Yeah. He's like- rich i also have baker i'll trade into you for Bijan robinson Throw in one, two, and Baker. Think you gotta, about it. You gotta Actually, I don't even have Baker in that league. But. <laughs> I'll say I'll smash sex, uh, smash sex at. Smash it. <laughs> yes, you would. I'm going to smash sex at. All right, let's move on to our next prospect. All right. This should be an interesting one. <laughs> All right, next up. Well, smash sex at. Ryan Thomas <laughs> Jr., LSU wide receiver. Six foot two and seven eighths inches, 209 pounds, nine and three quarters inch hands, 32 and three quarter inch arms. 79 and 5 eighths inch wingspan. He is 21. He'll be 22 in October. He ran a 4.33 in the 40 with a 1.50 10 yard split. He had a 20, 126 inch broad jump, 11 bench press reps, uh, 38 and a half inch vertical last year in 13 games. He had 68 receptions, 1,177 yards receiving, 17 touchdowns. He had a rush attempt for negative six yards. And those 17 touchdowns led all college football. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so Brian Thomas Jr., fantastic season with LSU. Uh, obviously, he was the uh, – most people consider him the Robin to the Batman, which was Malik Neighbors. Uh, but we've, we've seen a history of LSU receivers pairing up together, playing really well. We've, we've got that again this year. Both of these guys had fantastic seasons. Brian Thomas, a guy that really was, was a big deep threat, took the top off the defense – uh, often he is a guy that as far as like his release, I think he does a really good job of getting off the ball, yep. pretty solid catch radius. And, and obviously you heard those combine numbers as far as an athlete. I mean, the guy can burn at that size. So when you have that size speed combo, that's, that's a pretty lethal combination. And so far because of all of these things, he's being talked about in the conversation of a top 20 pick in the NFL draft this year. Going through all of the tape, uh, I, I'll say I don't necessarily see the hype that's been building with Brian Thomas. And look, I get it. We listed all of these really good things about Brian Thomas. Yep. But when I, when I look at some of his movement patterns, uh, I, I, I think he's a little bit stiff. Uh, I, he doesn't run a super diverse route tree. And when, when you see him run other routes, there's a few routes that he runs decently, but there's a lot of routes where he just doesn't look overly comfortable running these routes. He was also a player that basically produced nothing for most of his career up until this season and then just blew up. Yep. 
uh, which is which is always interesting. There's guys that do that and work out great. There's plenty of guys that do that, and it was a one-year wonder kind of thing. So for me, when I kind of brought everything together, I felt very meh about Brian Thomas. I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's a good player, but I don't think he's worth the hype that I've been kind of gardening and hearing uh, about Brian Thomas. I think he's a vertical threat that will do a good job of stretching the defense and making some big plays downfield, but he's not going to do a lot after the catch. He's not going to uh, be much of a, a possession guy. Right. He, I think he's I think he's a fairly one-dimensional player, which seems a little risky for me if I'm an NFL team taking a guy like that that highly. Yeah, Unfo- uh, unfortunately... NFL teams do that sometimes. They do. I mean, Justin Ross, for instance, is a guy that was very one-dimensional, just a speed guy, ended up going first round. So it can happen. And and not I, Justin Ross. John Ross. Uh, John Ross. John Ross. Yeah, they went seven overall. The I was like, wait, that's close. But Sorry. No. Yeah. My bad. Uh, but yeah, he, like you said, his route running leaves a lot to be desired. I think he does have some movement skills to improve that. I I, I don't see him quite maybe as stiff as you see him. I don't see that. Um. But it's not there. He he, he, needs, he has a long way to go as far as developing that. Uh, you know, for a big guy, I didn't really love him in some contested catch it type of scenarios. I, yeah, I thought very that, average. I, yeah, I thought kind of his hands fell off a bit there. I think he can make all the normal catches that you you know want a guy to make. But you know, for a guy that's six, you know, almost six three, two hundred nine pounds, and he scored a ton of touchdowns, I would like him to have a above the rim element to his game. So, so could, Quentin Johnson for that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would, you know, it's it's a little bit rough, uh, and I, I mean, I don't know. I just, for me, when you said top 20, there's some top 20 hype about this guy. That that I haven't been out there looking for, you know, where oh, yeah, these guys it's, are going. It's absolutely there. And yeah, it's I, there. I was thinking this guy is like a second-round like a second round guy that can, you know, develop on a team. And oh, no, he's not, going first round. Yeah, that, that, that to me is surprising after watching the tape personally. Um, cause I, you know, there's some things that he does well, but I don't think there's a full picture. Like a, he's not a full wide receiver that you can just go out there and he can be your number one guy right now. Could he develop into that? Sure. He's got some great tools. I mean, it's hard for a guy to, you know, to be six, that fast and that big, that yeah. big, that fast. Yeah. He scored touchdowns with the ball in his hands in the open field. He can do some things. He's never going to make anyone miss. He's not that type of person either. Um, but he does have another gear that, you know, uh, Marvin Harrison doesn't in the open field. You know what I mean? He can make somebody miss and turn that into something by just outrunning guys to, to, to spots. But that's kind of the extent, I think, of his, you know, yak. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it up a little bit here because I, flip it. Flip it. Flip I it. think there's some really good upside to his game. And every, everything that you said, I agree with. I don't agree with everything that you said. I do okay. This is, here's an interesting fact about Brian Thomas. He got an offer from LSU before he ever played varsity high school football. He went to a camp, and they, LSU offered him at that camp. Never played varsity football at that point. He was focused on basketball. When he got the offer from LSU, he started to play more focused on football and really, like his senior year, stopped playing basketball and focused on football. He's only 21 years old, doesn't turn 22 to October. So his overall football you know, like working on his football game. He's is it, He's very young. And what I like about Brian Thomas is we're like, I agree with a lot of the stuff you're saying is I think the tools are there for, if he gets in the right situation and he, for him to develop, like you said, he's a little stiff. I, I don't agree with that. Like I really like the way he's able to sink his hips and get in and out of breaks. Like, like he doesn't do it well enough. Like that's, that, that's one of his problems. Like he doesn't, he doesn't um, for his route running, he doesn't find them all. He needs to sharpen up his brakes a little bit because they're 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 a little it's unrefined. A little sloppy. Yeah. So he, which causes, which then causes him trouble to get separation. Agreed. But for his size, and when you watch the tape, like he is able to do that. Like you can see that he is able to do it. He just needs to work on it, like a lot. Like he needs to refine his game a lot. But there is a lot of tools there. He's extremely explosive. Like you said, getting off the line very well. Mm-hmm. Getting off the line explosive that way. Um, he's he could stop and start really fast, like really well. I thought that was really good. Um, I thought he tracked the ball pretty well, uh, too, on those deep balls. I thought he did that pretty good. Um, I thought, uh, I mean, you're right. His, his deep game is where he, he wins. And it, it, the bad part of his game is a short intermediate area. That's that's where he yep. struggles. But, like, 
that's really like where you see a refined receiver win, right? In those areas. And for me, when I watch him play, I don't see somebody who's like stiff and like, I don't see like a Devin Funches or something on those lines. Like I see somebody that has potential there. Like that if he gets with a good coaching staff and they work on his game and he's, he's actually can intake that knowledge. Like, there is potential for him to be a wide receiver one in this game because his uh, his athleticism athleticism sh- shines on tape. Um, I, he, he's got really good bursts. His separation, his his ball contested catches aren't where you want him to be. There's a lot of things that you don't want that you want him to do better at. Yeah, but it's not like sure. one of those. I don't watch him and say, "Oh, dude, he can't do that." Oh, he can't do that. It's like, oh, he needs to work. It's more like, oh, he needs to work on that. He needs to work on that he needs to he really needs to sharpen up those routes he really needs to learn how to like dig out of his breaks and sink those hips better and get in and out and i think there's potential here for him to do just that uh, and i'll give you i'll give you a lot of credit on that because that is one thing that is hard for us to be able to know ahead of time is how much better can they get at the next level yeah. um and so i think that might be arguably the biggest difference between us i'm evaluating on what I'm seeing right now. Uh-huh. And, you know, maybe he does take a big step forward uh, in his development. And if so, that that could really change things for him. Uh, it's just hard. It's hard to do that and trust it, you know, knowing that there's some things that need cleaned up quite a bit yeah. in his game. Like, that's, that's difficult for me to do. But I'll give you credit in the fact that that's something that we don't often allow for enough of is for these guys to get better and especially these younger players there's if you're a 25 year old receiver you're not getting much better at that point if you're 23 and you're in your senior like yeah i'm not i'm way less optimistic for a kid that's just 21 who hasn't been playing football all that long like adult and cocaine is another good example of that kind of player like then i'm way more optimistic for that again, and, I, I I have currently just how the receivers are talking about the next few days. Brian Thomas is my wide receiver five. I, I we'll talk about Lad McConkey. Okay. I have Lad McConkey ahead of Brian Thomas. I do as well. And I have Brian Thomas where he is currently on his upside. And like I said, there's certain things I see that he can do that shows me like okay, he could learn that. Doesn't yeah. mean he will learn it, but at least the opportunity is there it's, for him to possibly do it. For me, I see snippets of suddenness and burst out of breaks. It's not always there. Yeah, but I've seen it. I've seen it on occasion, and if he applies it to a full route tree, if he learns a full route tree, that's where I feel like he could become a good route runner. Right now, he's not. He's not. He's, yeah. he's just not a route. He, he barely runs routes. And, and I agree. So that's, that's what we're saying. I agree with all that. But, like, I would say, like, I just don't agree with the stiffness there, and I agree. Like, I think, at least for him, and listen, I'm the first one to come out here and doo-doo butter all over these guys. So like, that's doo-doo butter. Yeah, a lot of people don't like to do that. I don't mind doing it. You know, these are, <laughs> these are no longer kids. They're adults. They're, they're graduating college. Like take it like a man. If you don't want me to say it, then do better or go prove me wrong in the NFL. It's fine. It's not personal. Yeah. This is the game I play. You involve yourself in the game, just like monopoly. Like I'm gonna go ahead and take your rent. It's okay. Like it's, you know what I mean? So for me, <laughs> Brian Thomas is just a guy that I could see. He's just a guy. Like I see the upside. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's just a guy. Like I like the potential there. Yeah. And, where he goes and where he ends up and like him go into a certain spot where he can get a lot of work and a lot of rapport with that quarterback. Like you said, in the first round, like if this is a guy who goes to the Buffalo bills, he's the mm-hmm. number one receiver, like him and Josh Allen match up pretty damn well. They can work sure. out that intermediate stuff. He can learn that from Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir. I would almost rather him go to a place though, where he has someone else to take that pressure off of him. Yeah. Like the bears. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Bears. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. So for what it's worth, I have a 73.5 on him, uh, which is obviously much lower than uh, Marvin Harrison, where I had at 82. Uh, Just for some historical comps from my grades, uh, two guys that are very close to him in score were Jordan Addison, uh, Terrace Marshall, and Josh Downs. So, What do you you think, Jared? Um, I I agree with you, Rich, on, like, I see flashes. Like, there's some times where he pops. Like, I'm like, oh, like, the way he moved there, like, I could see – him blossoming into if, if he just does that where he flashes on a more consistent basis I can definitely see him for for what the hype that he's been getting like I think a lot of people are kind of like focusing on, in on like a few key moments that I saw sometimes in his tape but it just doesn't show up enough for me where I think he's gonna be a guy that may end up getting 
higher draft capital than I'm willing to spend in rookie drafts. Like for right now, the way I'm looking at it, you know, obviously there's no draft capital right now to look at. Like I'd probably take the top four running backs off the board before I would take Brian Thomas in, in rookie drafts. Um, I just think he's a little mo- more of a project, a good project, a, a lot to work with there. Um, but I, uh, specifically his releases were for me, like I thought he just didn't even do anything with his hands. A lot of time he just kind of kept him on his side or he always did like the same shoulder dip move off the line of scrimmage. Like it was the same thing kind of over and over again where these guys are getting his, their hands on him and he's not really able to do anything with it. He body catches a little bit too much for me, but um, – yeah, I mean, j- what what did you have for a score for him? And maybe Harrison too, because I don't know if you said your score for Marvin Harrison. Uh, Harrison was an eighty-two for me, okay. and then uh, Thomas right now is a seventy-one point six. Lower so, than you. okay, okay, yeah. All right, well, it's a lot of doo doo on Thomas, and I'm a little bit more optimistic on him. But like, he could easily be Gabe Davis, like easily, like that's yeah, he could. Very simple, be a Gabe Davis, and yep. that's what you And get. that's kind of how I see him right if, now. Yeah. If he doesn't improve, that's what he is. That's what he is. If he doesn't yeah. get better, he's Gabe Davis. Yep. I mean, like, just thinking about how the draft shakes out right now for what we know on these prospects, like, where would you guys be willing to draft a guy like Brian Thomas where you know he's going to have to develop a little bit more? I, I mean, it depends where he goes in NFL draft. Like, it's going to, like, if he goes 18 to 25 to a team that he could be, like, pretty close to being the number one guy, like, that propels him up a little bit, you know, but like, I don't know. Like right now he's already behind Ladd McConkey. He's already in a super flex league. He's already behind Brock Bowers. He's mm-hmm. already behind other top. He's already behind four receivers for me. What about like Jonathan Brooks? Um, what are the, those guys? Those guys. Have Assuming them. they get day two capital. They, yeah. But you, you, oh, you would yeah. think two of those guys are going to, of all of them are going to hundred percent. Like Trey, Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks are probably going to get day two capital for sure. So like I would probably take the running backs ahead of them. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at too. Like I just, like where he's pretty consistently going as the first pick after those top eight guys in super flex leagues, like very often I personally don't see myself taking him in the first round. I said the same thing on our nerd herd episode. I think it was either our nerd herd episode yesterday or whatever. I'm like, listen, there's all this talk about these receivers. I'm telling you right now when the NFL draft is done, there will be two running backs going in the first round of the rookie drafts. There's there's always the need as high as pushes them up. Yeah. As high as pick seven. Yeah, is where it's gonna go. Like people, the Cowboys are gonna take one of these guys, and he, they're gonna. <laughs> and those up. guys are good enough. And somebody's gonna I'd take be, him over, like I'd these top guys, guys like there. over yeah. JJ McCarthy. Somebody will take if him over Trey, Romo Dunze. If Trey Benson goes to the Cowboys, <sighs> yeah, like he, I might be irresponsible. <laughs> 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 but who would? Like, right, but right. That, that's right. a justifiable action. Like if he goes, to, we were talking about the Chargers. Like if one yeah. of those guys oh, somehow gosh. goes to the Chargers, if he go to the Cowboys, and so like. <laughs> Wild and crazy. You're gonna, guy. you're gonna, they're gonna go pretty high. They're gonna, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna jump all those. They're gonna jump Lad McConkey for me. So you're talking yeah. like now, that's what we were saying yesterday. Like every second, like oh one eight one eight, like that's the end. No, it's not the end because these running backs at nine are gonna be valuable. Currently now with the Bills situation, guess what? One nine is way more valuable because whoever Who, goes there is gonna get a bump. huge bump in ADP. So it's it's. This draft, we were saying said on the podcast, the Nerd Herd podcast, like this, I've never been as excited for a draft for Dynasty because it's so deep with Dynasty prospects. It's yep. not like any other draft I've ever seen. With like the first three days, the first three rounds, we're going to see 30 Dynasty prospects. Yep. That's unheard of, right? So like all these guys are getting good draft capital. I'm not going to like all these guys tape, but some guys are going to end up in really good situations at the same time. So yep. it's really... Outside of like, I feel very comfortable with the top seven being the top seven, no matter what. But like we said, once that running back goes to Dallas, now it's like now he's entering that seven. Because although JJ McCarthy in there yep. too, once he goes top ten, now we have a top nine. Like we have a top nine that I feel really good about. And guess what? Wait until we start talking about Lad McConkey because I feel really damn good about that guy too. So, Matt, I'm surprised you didn't talk about um, Brian's Brian Thomas's uh, effort. Sometimes I thought that popped a little bit. It was like. Oh, we, there's a couple more receivers we got to talk about that have some effort issues. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There'll <laughs> well, be more, too. Sure. <laughs> and there'll be more. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I were talking before him, like, there's a receiver that literally he run his route and then just stop. And then, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's so. all, folks. Attention, Dynasty nerds. Want to play Dynasty like a pro? Check out FFPC, where serious Dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over 1,500 la- leagues with stakes ranging from 
$100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game, it's a community. With unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading, it keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single Dynasty League fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've com completely revamped their Dynasty for Sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect Dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFPC. See, Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC, where your dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. Who's the next guy? I can't wait. Next, this is a guy that Garrett tweeted out earlier today. The next guy that he likes as much as. Uh, no, you read that backwards. This was my dislike for Brian Thomas, it, not my like for this player. False like. Let's get into All it. All right, next up. I Dev literally say in the tweet, I don't like either player. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> Devontae Tez Walker. Um, North Carolina wide receiver, six foot one and a half, 193 pounds, nine and one eighth inch hands, 33 and a quarter inch arms, uh, 79 and eighth inch wingspan. He's 22 years old. He'll be 23 in June. He ran a four, three, six in the 40, which is surprising. Pretty fast for an old guy. It's pretty, f he's not that old 22. There's some old, there's some older guys. I was going to say, he is not old. I know. He had a 1.54 10 yard split, which isn't fantastic. Though. Uh, um, 134 inch broad jump, which wow, and wow, uh, four, that is pretty impressive. 40 points, super impressive, 40 and a half inch vertical. Last year, in eight games, he had 41 receptions, 699 yards receiving, seven touchdowns, three rushing attempts, 23 yards, and no, no touchdowns there. So, I'm gonna say, going into this, like, I was excited to watch this guy's tape because I knew his name. Okay. And I've heard about him. I heard yeah. Garrett talk about him. Like, Garrett hey, out there on Twitter. Just, uh, I love this. Tez yeah. Walker. Garrett was really high. On <laughs> Literally nothing he, I've he, said. He missed multiple games. Literally nothing like, I've he said. He transferred um, from Kent. And, where was Kent, right? Yep. Kent yeah. State. And then, yep. Kent like, State. He wasn't allowed to play. Then he was allowed to play after, like, what, eight games? Yeah, it was, like, halfway through this. It was really weird. Yeah, it was, it was so, yep. like, I was pretty excited to watch his tape. And, oh, my gosh, did <laughs> I come away disappointed. This... Tez Walker Do is the butter. so unbelievably one-dimensional. So he's Brian it, Thomas. It blows my mind. He is go deep and nothing else. Like, no, I didn't. I don't know if I saw the dude do anything else. I don't even know if I saw him do anything. This is, I mean, his route running. You were not watching closely if you did not see him do anything else. Uh, like, there were some real nice comeback routes. I was going to say, they were all hitches or, yeah. or stop yeah. routes. There were some really nice comebacks. Or curls. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me get into what I liked about him. Good with the ball in his hands when he actually gets, gets the ball. Sure. Yard after the catch. Yeah. He's, he's, he's good there. Just fast. Um, he, he knows is, how to exploit his speed, right? And, and get, get, get to places. He understands yeah. angles. Yeah, angles. For, all for that being skinny, like he, he's strong enough to break arm tackles. I saw some of that going on, which is pretty nice. Um. I thought he had some pretty good body control for when he did go up and get the football. I thought that was okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's it. So let's get into some other stuff. Like his route running to me is not great whatsoever. Like he really rounds his routes. He He's out there like not doing much. Um, he's got no polish, man. Yeah, getting out of his breaks is not good, which he has almost – no separation at that point when he tried to like actually run besides outside go route. He really struggled getting separation. Uh, all his um, short area stuff like stuff was horrendous. Like he has no short area game. He literally had to take steps to stop. Like he doesn't just stop and go. Like he takes a couple steps to stop. Mm -hmm. um, he catches a lot of balls into his chest, which I, I didn't love. Cost a, cost him a touchdown versus Duke. I saw that one there. Mm -hmm. I saw multiple balls that. He, went into his chest that caused problems for the game. His route tree needs a ton of work. He's a go route guy. He's a, he's a good best ball guy. Like I take him there, like best ball leagues. I would like him. I think that makes sense. He's only played in yeah. uh, 23 games. That's all he's played in. Uh, he, and what I saw too on tape as well, like for him is he got a lot of cushion in college because of his speed, like a lot of cushion. And I didn't have, I would press him every single yeah. time. Cause when he did, 
he struggled bad. So if I was an NFL defense for him, I'm just going to press him. Because in college, I'd say, I mean, he got like 15 yards every single time, almost every snap. I wrote that in my notes that I wasn't really able to even really get it. to know what his release is. I, I was like, yep. I don't know how to even evaluate the release because they're just giving him a cushion. Like he got it. He has a ton of speed. It's, it's hard to, I hate his first couple of steps. And there's certain wide receivers that I've felt like this before in the past. And, and it ne- they never, they never got over that fact and, and turned themselves into anything. No. And I, is he the, that same kind of guy? I, I don't know, but his first couple of steps off the line, it, it doesn't look like he has any urgency to try to get into his routes. Um, He's fast, but his 10-yard split, he ran a 4.36 with a 1.54 10 yard split. That's like four tenths of a or four hundredths of a second slower than most of the other guys that ran in the four threes. He he his he's a build up speed. He's Once he gets going, yep. he he's going. You know, he's going super fast and, and barely, you know, a lot of guys are aren't gonna be able to catch him once he's gone. But those first couple of steps for a wide receiver are huge. You need mm-hmm. to be able to get in and out of breaks. You need to be able to get off that line quick. And it's it's not something he's great at. And I I said that this guy he could be a Gabe Davis type, and it wouldn't surprise me as a Which guy. Which is interesting because my tweet we we just comp the last two players <laughs> to Gabe Davis. Here's my tweet. You ready? I'll discuss it more on the podcast tonight. But I don't see a big difference between Brian Thomas Jr. and Dantez Walker. I have Thomas slightly higher, both excel in similar areas and struggle in similar areas, comparable size and speed. I'm not the biggest fan of either player, but from an NFL perspective, I don't know why you would take one in the middle of round one when you can have the other late in round three. See, that's where I, I completely disagree because like you would take I, a, you would take him in the first round. You'd I see Brian, Brian Thomas, Thomas like upside some things he does well in flash. I don't see anything with Tez Walker. I, he's, he's extreme. When I say one dimensional, I mean one dimensional go. I, but that's all Brian Thomas does right I now. I disagree. Could he do more? Maybe. But for right now, can you tell me definitively that you've seen in his routes that he can do anything else yes. effectively other than go deep? I, I've seen some potential there. There's some flashes of him I, sticking I, his hips and getting in out of some I haven't some seen stuff. a ton, but I have seen flashes. Little. And a little. Brian Thomas, to me, has got a, a night and day difference in offside. Yeah, night and day, son. Here's the thing. Darkness. Right now. Upside? Sure. You, we can play Sol- upside Solar game. Clips? We can Sol- we can play the upside <laughs> game. You're talking about acquisition until, costs. until we're yeah. But, we can play the upside game until we're blue in the face. But and I will. But Call right me now, Smurf, baby. Right now, what we see these two prospects are one's a little bit better in Brian Thomas, but they play a very very similar game with very similar size with very similar speed. And if I'm going to and, and what Jared said, it's it's acquisition costs for me. Sure. I, I don't like either player, to be very clear. I'm not a fan of either guy. But if I'm going to take one, g- give me the third round in, in my in my rookie drafts. The guy I would take in the third round is Tez Walker. So he wants Tez Walker. Instead of the first Brian round Thomas. and having to take Brian Thomas. I would so never like take Walker. him. Yeah, he's a Tez Walker guy. He's a Tez Walker guy. You like Tez Walker <laughs> over Brian Thomas. He, he did. I mean, you were high on him since it was at Kent State. I literally said. Literally the only reason I even got excited about his tape because of this guy. Just, Makes all sense. I'm just kidding. Gary. Surprise, never said anything about surprise you never told me. I've deep. literally never said <laughs> you, anything amazing you about Tez Walker. 100% did 100%. Back. I took him in the so rookie the draft. Can I took re- him in the rookie can draft. You rewind we did. The tape that's when, what it was. I, I thought, took him in the rookie I draft. I, thought I, I said, I don't know a ton about this guy. I thought I did. But. Uh, I I'm swear taking like, him. I liked what I saw because he had such yeah. a limited window with Drake May and those eight games. And, and eight games, I like when you I only saw. watch highlights of eight games and he scores. What do you have? Like four or five touchdowns and Seven. makes big plays. Seven touchdowns. Yeah, even more than I thought. So to me, right now, I agree. Brian Thomas more ceiling, but right now they're the same type of player in the same type of mold. One's just going to cost you. Way they're, more. They're definitely going to be different. Uh, yeah, Brian, you took him at 203. So Brian Thomas tracks the ball better than him. You see that one? There's one play where Tez Walker is like going for the ball over his head. And he's like this. Yeah. And then the ball, <laughs> and then the ball just like bounces right off his hands. Yeah, like, he had another drop that same game. Uh, same game. Yeah. That's the same game where it bounced off his chest. Yeah. Like no. it literally bounced off his chest. Cost him even t- like, And then he, fu- then he fumble. And yeah. Was, yeah. I'm, dude, I'm sorry. Like I came away com- like completely unsat. It's like when people like, like, oh, not like, yeah, like, oh, this is a cake. And then you go to cut into it. And it's really just a tin can. And you're like, oh, you got me. Tin can. Yeah. I don't know when people put like, 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 like they'll put like uh cake, uh, yeah. cake dressing or what's that called? Cake. What? 
Like icing? Icing. icing. Yeah. Icing on icing. Dressing? It's the icing on the cake. <laughs> it's the dressing on the cake, baby. And you're then that ranch off. cake. And then you go to cu- cut it, and you're like, this isn't cake at all. Thousand Island? What? Thousand <laughs> Island? I don't want to see. Wait, what goes uh, on a Caesar salad? Thousand Island? I have no idea. Caesar dressing goes on a Caesar salad. Uh, Caesar. I think you said Brian Thomas is stiff. I think Tez Walker's stiff. Stiff. I agree. Yeah. I think they're both stiff. Capital I think F's. they're a lot alike. I think they both I don't think Thomas are is very stiff. Good. But, um, I would like to watch both of these guys side by side mm-hmm. next to you. Okay. And next to Garrett? Next to you. I want to watch you. I want to watch you watching pants? them. Where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to see what you're seeing. Because no. I do. Th- I, I, I think hands? if you guys, I think if you watch both those guys side by side, the, the movement uh, between those two guys is different. Completely um, different. Yeah. To me. I, to me, I think they sit, fit a very similar archetype, which is a deep player, a player you, that's going to go you, deep, has good speed and good size. Like, I think Darius teams that want to dress, yes, put them in the Darius Slayton category. Like, <laughs> Yeah. That's who they are. And less Brian Thomas develops a lot, which I, I don't disagree there's potential, but what we have right now, they're the two they both are. This day going forward, whenever the hat goes by, like, dude, see your guy's not doing too good, Tez. is it? I can't wait for Tez Walker to get drafted somewhere <laughs> yeah, like, so oh, I can high-five yeah. Garrett. He's going to be so excited. Got drafted, he's, he's not be, my guy. It's your guy. He's going to be so excited. Rasheen Ali is my guy. But, <laughs> oh, God. Do you have anything to add on top of that, Turks? Uh, <laughs> Um, Turds. Well, Turds. I, I <laughs> pretty much echo again what you guys said. He's herky jerky when he tries to cut. I don't see much hip fluidity. Uh, I, I think there's just a lot to be desired for him to ever be fantasy football relevant. There's plenty of other players in this class that I'd rather take a shot on in the second or third round. Um, I just he ended up with like a 67 for me in my nerd score, which yeah, can be Kate Stover. Yeah, we're not not a big hit rate in that range. <laughs> Such a random name to throw. <laughs> I would I would take Kate Stover sure, over but him. It's such a random name. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Woo. on Sleeper right now. The Dynasty so GM. Pretty. You can use the analyzer. That you can use nice. the uh the, the trade calculator. And my favorite thing is the inbox, right? Where all your trades from all your sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual sleeper at and right now we could be more excited to be partners with them and right now if you don't know they are doing dfs and i know how many people that play dynasty play dfs as well and right now there's not a better place to play dfs than sleeper they're offering up to 100 times their, your entry the highest payout in the whole dfs market right now you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time all you gotta do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on Sleeper you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share it with your friends and get rewarded together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Ooh, um, <laughs> and get your deposit match and have a good time. You'll know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues, and now even a Dynasty Gem in one spot is fully operational inside Sleeper right now. And then when you're a Nerd Herd member, you get that full access to that. And remember, Dyn- you also want to download the Dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there. Check it out. Check our friend Sleeper. Check out the DFS. Use that promo code NERDS. Get your whole estate. <laughs> right on to the next random name. <laughs> Tavion Robinson, Kentucky wide receiver, five foot ten and a half, 191 pounds, nine and a quarter inch hands, 31 inch arms, 75 and a quarter inch wingspan. He is 124 years old on my spreadsheet here. So that's 124. <laughs> that, I dude, I dig wrong. for his age so hard. All <laughs> yeah, I got I know I, can't find I know either. his birthday is October first. He's a fifth year senior. So yep. he's gotta be like 124. <laughs> What, whatever my formula, and it defaults to that if it, I don't have a birthday. Let's just say, then. just get to it. Like, his age isn't going to matter. No, it's not. Oh, uh, no, it's in not. In 13 <laughs> games last year, he had 41 receptions, 552 yards, and four touchdowns, a couple of rushing attempts for 12 yards, and he basically got 500 yards every That's year. That's what I was going to ask. Has there ever <laughs> been a player more consistently meh for his entire career? Yeah, Josh Palmer. That's why I called <laughs> yeah. Josh Palmer well, 400 yard Josh Palmer. That's, That's right. All he yeah. ever got. He played, he played from 2019 to 23, 2023. Here's his yard totals every year 404, 563, 559, 470, 507. Wow. He actually got worse. 
After his, he did, well, his he's freshman the third year. best receiver on that team in Kentucky. Yeah, it, 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 it's yeah, five hundred yards, buddy. He's a little gadget player. He, yeah. he, he lined up out wide a little bit in the slot a little bit in the backfield a little bit. He, he, he I don't know. Yeah, he's quick. He's he's a little jitterbug type of guy. And, and that that's basically what I have on on his strengths. It, it really just comes down to. He was he was good with the yards after the catch. Yep. He can he can make guys miss in the open field. Uh, he's got solid game speed. Uh, not as fast as I kind of expected him to be, uh, but still a fast player. Yep. I think I think he I think he changed his uh, pace enough yeah. to make it look better. I thought he did that good. I thought he tracked the ball well too. Yep. I think so. Uh, I think he has solid burst. His quickness is there. So like what you would expect out of a slot a smaller type slot receiver. Is, is pretty much what you're getting out of this guy. But he is an older prospect. But on some of the other things, he almost lined up exclusively in the slot. Uh, so we didn't get to really see much of his his release game. I, I think he would end up in the slot at the NFL level too. So there's not much concern there, but we don't really know much. His route running, I thought, was fine. Okay. Yeah. You would expect it a little more for somebody with feet that looked as good as his in the open field. Yep. I didn't think that reflected in his route running game. I thought his route runner was a little stiff. Yeah. W- w- more than you would expect for somebody for, that's yeah, for, as fluid in the open field. Yeah. Who doesn't, yeah. Who doesn't run stiff, but yes. like his route I agree running with was kind Robotic. of like robotic. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was uh, and a lot of very rounded things. And there were times where like he would just run like through players in his route running instead of like, it, it was odd. Like it was almost like he turned his brain off for parts of his route running. It was, it was weird, weird to me. Uh, not a lot there with like catch radius, contested catch, things like that. He's okay enough where he's gonna try and be a wide receiver five on an NFL team. That's what that's what he's gonna try and, and do. And you know, a guy like this, especially with the kickoff rules that are changing yeah. in the NFL, has a good chance to stick on an NFL team. Doesn't necessarily bring a lot of fantasy value unless your scoring allows for that kind of sure. return yardage and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I, I, there's not a ton of fantasy. Yeah, upside. Tavian Robinson out of Kentucky is just somebody who I'm not overly excited about. I'd be like, surprised if he gets drafted. I think you will because of kick return stuff, uh, special teams. Uh, people are putting a pretty big emphasis on that they already. Uh, so, I, I, mean, I gave him a 65 for what it's worth. Uh, so not like it's barely in the draftable I, range. I wonder for that, like, what they're going to do. Like, you I got think 59? Yeah. With the new rule, like, how many running backs might get opportunities Maybe. in that situation That's true. with that new kickoff rule. Like, it, it is going to change things up. Like, a guy like Cordero Patterson would All of a sudden had value again. He got yeah. snapped up in an Immediately instant. by Pittsburgh. Immediately. Yeah. As soon as that, that rule kind of came through. Yeah, back to Arthur Smith. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he can do this. Let's let's sign him. Move over, Najee. Somewhere like, even like a guy like Elijah Moore would thrive for the Browns, like in that kind of situation. Sure. There, so. sure. All right. So moving on, Anthony, is it Gould? Gold? Guys, Gold. I Gold. Gold. I heard a couple of different announcers say it a couple yeah, different ways. They mix I'm it like, up. I'm like, Gold. thanks for nothing, guys. For, uh, that's what I've That's what I've heard. All right. Uh, it makes sense. Robbie Gold, Anthony Gold. Mm-hmm. Um, or, brother, Oregon brother. State wide receiver, five foot eight and three eighths, 174 inches, eight and seven eighths inch hands, 29 and five eighths inch arms, 69 and seven eighths inch wingspan. I do not have a birthday on him. Does anyone have a? Uh, yeah. Um, no, I don't. Anyway, uh, <laughs> 40 and 4.39 seconds. The 10 yard split, 1.49. He was tops tied with uh, Xavier uh, Worthy, who broke the combine record for 40. On the 10-yard split, so very quick off the line. Uh, 4.16, 20-yard shuttle, 129-inch broad jump, 39-and-a-half-inch vertical. In 11 games last year, he had 44 receptions, 718 yards, receiving two touchdowns, four rece- uh, or four rushes, and 22 yards rushing. I don't remember if this is me or you. You want to go? Yeah, I liked him. I did, too. Um, yep, me three. I think out of all the receivers we're going to talk about outside that, like, top tier, like, right out – Right behind Brian Thomas for me, out of all the guys we're going to talk about, Anthony Gold uh, slides in for me. He has the next highest score for me as well. So me as all well. I hear right now in my head is your, I don't know, your rant last year about uh, players under 5'9". <laughs> Well, receivers he's, under five nine. Hey, you can see he's adapting. He's learning. Oh yeah, dude. Tank Dell changed the whole game for me. So, yeah, but he's no uh, Tank Dell. Yeah, no, he's definitely no Tank Dell. But I mean, he's fast. I mean, five foot eight, one seventy four. He's definitely a small receiver. But there's things about his game that I really thought were pretty nice. I thought that um, for his size, I thought he tracked the ball really well. I thought he had really good body control. He is well down the field. I thought sure. he did really good there. Um, I thought he had a good vision. 
for yards after the catch as well. I thought he did a pretty good job there. Uh, I thought he had loose hips, which is something that I, I'm always loving from good wide receivers. He had pretty, really good hands as well. So, like, to me, he, he just looked like a really good natural receiver. Um, his 10-yard split was a little weird because, like, I thought his release off the line, his natural release, like, it's fine that he got off quick, but, like, I thought against other some defensive backs, I thought it was just okay at times. Like, I thought it was something he could work on. Up. Well, uh, he's a smaller guy. Release yeah. doesn't necessarily correlate. I didn't re- necessarily mean release when I said that. Just his get off is phenomenal in my opinion. his zero to 60 his zero to 60 yeah his burst yes. like there yeah that's that's uh, that's good there um not obviously for a size he doesn't play strong you know that's it's i thought relative for his size i feel like he plays strong he but, but he's just limited there, by yeah. his size yeah that's, and that's what i'm saying like he's gonna like versus contested catches things like that situation he's like, got some dog but he does he's, uh, he's five foot eight that's what, like, that's <laughs> you better we're... have some dog to succeed i think or you're not going to at all, and I think he does some things well. I think I think he can do some stuff at the catch point where it, I like the that's my ball, you know. And you said he moves really well, you know, like he he does everything well, like a wide receiver should. And his movement skills, I think, is what kind of sets him apart for Agreed. me. I think it's it's his ability to get in and out of breaks, his burst out of those breaks yeah. is what gets him separation, which gets the ball in his hands. And once he's got the ball in his hands, he turns that into a punt return type of scenario just like that. It's Yeah, it is like video game type of stuff watching this guy on the field. So for a guy that's 5'8", 174 pounds, you know, we maybe would poo-poo him in the past. I, I really do – I think there's some redeeming qualities here. I like his game. I think in the right situation, is he a Cole Beasley type of guy? You know what I mean? With maybe a little bit more juice um, than Cole Beasley because I just think he's got more top-end speed. That's kind of how I see him. I think he's going to have to find an offense that wants to pepper a slot guy with targets for him to have fantasy relevance. Um, He he reminded me a little bit, maybe not as as thick as this guy, but kind of a Wandale Robinson Reminds me type, of Calvin Austin. Top of role. Cal- Calvin Austin. Who I love, by the way. Yeah. Still still <laughs> still like Calvin Austin. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave him I gave him some really, really solid marks. Obviously, physicality and catch radius, things like sure. that. Pretty low yeah. uh, when you're five nine and uh as small as he is. You just can't. But yards out of the catch gave him an eight and a half, uh, yeah. which is a which is a really high mark. He has the the best quickness score for me out of anyone I graded so far at a nine. Uh so he I, I think he moves really, really well in the open field. So watching watching him in the open field, I think, is really fun. And DJ Ungalele, his quarterback, really did not do him any favors. Like, I know he was a highly touted prospect <laughs> out of Clemson. Did I say it wrong? Yeah, a little bit. I thought right. I was close. I said everybody, it with confidence, though. You met. Yeah. I, I said it with confidence, though, so most people will believe me. I, I thought that was the dude's name. Right? Yep. See? Uh, it was close. A- either way, he he's, he's a guy that has been talked about as – you know, a great quarterback, blah, blah, blah. And he's always kind of disappointed everywhere he's gone. He's going to end up being Florida State's quarterback next year. But uh, watching him on a lot of those throws, I was like, you had this dude wide open yep. and, and you just missed. So I think his numbers could have even – and you could say that for a lot of guys. It's college quarterbacks. But sure. uh, I think his numbers could have even been a lot better with some better quarterback play. Nice receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jared? Jared, you got I, anything? I agree. I mean, I think he's a pretty quick player. Uh, extremely quick, I should say. He he also has one of my top quickness grades. Um, I thought his route running was really good as well. Like, gave it I mean, an eight. He, yep, I, eight as well. So um, it's just it's tough for me to see uh, fantasy football relevance from a guy with his stature and the way he plays, just because I've seen so many guys that I have liked like him, like Sky Moore or yeah. Calvin Austin and Rondell Moore. I mean, there's so many guys. The list goes on. It's just um, it's just tough to find any relevance from. It, but. And, that's, and that's a caveat where like we have so many more receivers to watch. Like you know the Rome Wilsons, Amy Mitchells. Yeah, it was refreshing know. to watch him after watching Tavion Robinson though, because yeah, I, mean, sure. I kind of went in order of the, yep. the sheet similar players, just yeah, a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we and that's, go. And that's yeah. a big thing outside of Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, Lad McConkey, Marvin Harrison. We're gonna talk about like everybody else in this class. Like we're gonna talk yeah. about for the next two shows is kind of like uh, okay. Yeah, yeah he, who's he, gonna separate themselves? He had a seventy two point one eight for me, which for a guy of his size is actually a pretty solid score. Uh so he's he's below Brian Thomas, uh but but ahead of Tez Walker. So he's about seventy for me, so Okay. I'm on the same I'm, I'm a little bit higher, but all right. So moving on is this Jaquan. 
Jaquan. Jaquan. Jaquan. Jaquan. Jaquan Jackson, two lane wide receiver, five foot nine and an eighth, 188 pounds, eight and seven eighths inch hands, 30 and seven eighths inch arms, 74 and seven eighths inch wingspan. Everything's got to be seven eighths with this guy. Uh, 23 and seven eighths <laughs> inch age. <laughs> uh, no, 23, 23 years old. He'll be 24 in May. Uh, he ran a 4.42 in the 40, 1.55 in the 10 yard split. 118 inch broad jump, 12 bench press reps, 32 inch vertical, and last year in at Tulane in 10 games he had 26 receptions, 439 yards, and four touchdowns, five rush attempts. I'm trailing off because this is freaking boring. So 51 <laughs> yards. So <laughs> it's funny that you said everything is seven eighths with him because my score, kid you not, is a 63.78. What? Look Whoa. at that destiny. What? Uh, so, so high for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second lowest score. <laughs> it's still so high for him. Uh, so I uh, haven't gotten to this guy yet, but it doesn't sound like I might. You, might not you're not missing much. No. Uh, basically Go ahead and move for, on. for us, anything under 64 is, is basically not draftable. Uh, so he kind of falls in that undraftable range, uh, at this point, 63 and Point four seven five for me. I mean, he's really. <laughs> you said I was trying. You were also at a sixty three. Uh, yeah, there was not a lot to love in his game. There were moments where he flashed. Same thing that you would see out of some of these other smaller receivers. He's quick. He can do some things after the catch. But if he catches it, yes, his hands. <laughs> lowest score I gave out of anybody for hands. Wow. Uh, he has a four. Wow. He has a four for me on hands. Greg I Little. so so many body catches and so many just missed catches. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like if, it, if there's a body on him, like I, it's over with. There was a point in my run after catch notes category. I said, I don't know. He keeps dropping the ball. I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for him to catch one. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has the lowest. He's hand not hard scoring. to bring down after the catch. Uh, he so has, he's not very uh, strong with the ball in his hands. No. So there's just there's not really a lot to like here. No, no. Which I feel bad saying, but there's not. Oh, I don't. He's not even on my board. Yeah. It's, he's very inconsistent with his hands because there were times that I saw him pluck the ball and, and look there good were. and stuff like that. So, but a lot of body catches and drops. A lot too. of body catches. We are going to overall uh, scout thirty six wide receivers. We're going to talk about it's a lot. The That's show. the most we've ever done. That is By the far. most, and he is probably going to be right near the bottom. He's going to be near the bottom. Bottom five. And listen, there's running backs, there's tight ends, there's <laughs> quarterbacks. So. <laughs> I don't know where he's going to fit in my draft. Take a order. flyer on his quarterback, Michael Pratt, instead. Who he, makes these lists? He might get, yeah. have to watch. He might get drafted Pratt as a, like, looked a pretty, pretty bad returner. also from what I was <laughs> – At least it's a super flex league. Just take it. <laughs> Just take it. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the last guy we're talking about, thankfully, uh, because <laughs> – If there was somebody worse than him, I, I probably wouldn't even be There's somebody it. I've ranked worse than next – Show. Well, we just went over an hour a little bit ago. So, so. we'll be back tomorrow. we got some good names. Malik Neighbors, uh, Lad McConkey. So we got some really good guys to talk about on tomorrow's show. So tune in for that. And for part two, out of a total of six parts for the receivers, we'll finish up with tight ends, and then we'll be the NFL draft to do our NFL draft shows, mock drafts, all that fun stuff. So remember, you have complete opportunity to get in the nerd herd. Check out the film on these guys. See what you guys are getting there. Check them out. Use the tools to help you get ready for your dynasty fantasy football draft and, you know, get ready for your mock draft and overall trades. Because remember, the dynasty GM, we don't talk about this enough, is where when you're a member of the Nerd Herd, you get in there and set your own rankings in the Nerd Herd, the trade calculator, the league analyzer, everything works off of your own personal rankings. Like, yeah. the dynasty GM is designed just for you to use it any way you possibly want. It's a free app to download. Obviously, it's limited unless you pay Buy us one cup of coffee a month. But for what you get for that one cup of coffee per month so much. is worth its weight in gold. Like I said, you get the nerd score, which will come out slightly before the NFL draft. And, you know, historically right now, we can say the nerd score has outperformed draft position. So draft capital, draft capital. Yep. So our nerd score has outperformed NFL GMs. You get that tool. You get, the, you get the app, you get the GM. And maybe it's like, hey, you know what? Like, I don't like my rankings. I love your guys' tool, but, you know, Rich, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but I love Matt Harmon or Rich Rebar or Matthew Berry's rankings or Mike Clay's. You can take them and input them into the Dynasty GM, and the okay. whole app will work off of those rankings. So it's a great place to be. The joy of the Nerd Herd. Join our community as we grow the game of Dynasty and consistently build tools to make your life easier. So 
Appreciate all the support. We're back tomorrow talking more wide receivers. Adios.